everyone, Andy from Single Trap Magazine. I'm out on this glorious day to show you this, the brand new YT Izzo. Now, if you look at YT and think, hey, they're a gravity brand. They've got a downhill team. They have free ride legends. They've got downhill bikes. They've even got a gravity orientated e-bike. Well, yeah, they cover all of those bases, but one base they didn't cover was lightweight cross country trail bikes that can still be a bit playful on the down. And this is exactly what the Idzo is designed to be. It's a full carbon fiber bike with 130 mil travel front and rear, and it has a lockout on the rear too, which is not something we would expect from YT. Now when YT designed the Izzo, they were looking for, to create something that is fast, agile, and sharp. And YT is saying, yeah, that's pretty much like the Katana Blade shown in Japanese movies and Japanese anime. And actually, when they were creating this, they created an anime for it too, to show off how fast and agile this bike is meant to be. We can take a look at that here. So yeah, that's just a clip, but you can see the full video, a cool launch video over on the YT uh, YouTube channel. Anyway, back to the bike. It's a fast, agile trail weapon. It's an effective trail weapon. Can't believe I said that, but it is. It's a great fun bike and a lot of fun to be ridden, even on tame cross country trails, which is what I've been doing during the lockdown. Now, one thing that the Izzo has that I didn't think I would use is the lockout. Now, although YT have given this bike Fox suspension front and rear, the lockout is actually a RockShox system. It's a twist lock, like grip shift lockout. And actually what you do is you twist to open up the suspension and you press it to lock it out. Now, the suspension platform, if, you let, if left open, is extremely stable. There's a great pedal platform there. And even if you get out of the saddle and sprint, there's very little bobbing. But for those times when you're on very, very smooth trails, or if you're on a transition from road onto trail, hitting that lockout can really stiffen things up and really helps the bike sprint along at some speed. Now, usually I'm not the kind of person who wants to get the fastest climbing time, but the more I've ridden this bike, the more I want to push myself and get fitter and go faster uphill. And using that lockout has enabled me to knock a few seconds off those climbs. So the Itzo's full carbon frame has full internal cable and hose routing. There's also a complement of rubber protection on the rear end to stop any chain slap and ensure that this bike is super quiet and sounds so smooth on the descents. The rear end has double sealed bearings for long life and each of those bearings has a one-sided uh, access port. So you only need one tool to get at those and undo them when they need servicing. Now YT are offering the Izzo in a range of builds starting from £2,599 and weighing at 13 kilograms. That's really light for such a cheap bike, affordable bike, sorry. All the way up to a £5,699 with SRAM axis wireless shifting and axis uh, wireless reverb that weighs in at 12 kilograms. Now that top of the range bike is limited to just 150 units. Once they're gone, this is the top of the range, baby. This is the pro race. It weighs 12.1 kilograms. It comes with a full carbon wheel set, carbon handlebar. Yeah, and it's super duper lightweight and fun, even climbing. Now, if you've been following me a lot recently, you will have seen that I've been testing a lot of e-bikes. Now, I love e-bikes, but the problem is, although they're great for the aerobic uh, fitness, they're good for upper body strength, they do weaken your legs a little bit. But on such a lightweight bike with fast rolling tires and lightweight wheel set, I was able to climb just as quickly as on this as I can on an e-bike? Maybe, perhaps. But over time, uh, riding this bike on mellow uh, terrain and you know taking those climbs and exploring a little bit, I've got fitter, I've got faster, and I've really enjoyed the agility of this short travel bike. Now, don't go thinking that this is just a cross-country bike. You can see here in these clips that YT have provided, the Izzo can really handle the rough stuff too. Now, I've not tried that myself, I really want to, but after the pandemic is over, we'll get an Izzo in again, and I'm gonna hit those enduro trails to see just how good it is. But I have no doubt in my mind that it will be very, very good. Now, the frame itself, as I've already mentioned, 130 mil travel front and rear. We have a 66 degree head angle, which is pretty slack for this kind of bike, and a 77 degree seat tube angle. That can be adjusted by 0.5 of a degree with the flip chip, and that also uh, increases the drop from 35 to 40. So there's a bit of a wiggle room there with the geometry. Um, the overall design of the bike is very different from what we've seen from YT so far. On the Jeff C and the Capra, we see that 
a horizontal shock position and on the ISO they've gone for a vertical shock position. Now the reason why YT have done that is because they say the vertical shock position for this type of bike suits this better. It doesn't mean that the new Capra or the new Jesse are going to go that way. Well, I suppose unless that suits that frame design, it just that means that this the suspension system suits this frame better than another one. And it also means that we've got more room in the front triangle for a water bottle, and we've also got space here for a tool as well. We've got tool bosses there as well. Speaking of that water bottle, this is the larger First Master 6000, I think. I think it's 835 milliliter water bottle, and it uses that cool magnetic fidlock uh, connector so uh, really easy to un uh, disconnect and pop back on while riding now this is a medium sized bike because I wanted a box fresh bike I went for a medium and that has a reach of 450 millimeters now if that's not particularly long I would normally go for a large which has 472 millimeters but to be honest I've really enjoyed that shorter bike for its playful poppy riding especially while I've just been riding on smoother terrain or long fields and not really being doing any gnarly stuff so it's made tame riding fun again and actually because it's so lightweight and it has so little suspension it's so easy to bunny hop and clear things on my first ride out I cleared a set of routes that I would normally really lift hard on my e-bike to clear but on this it needed no effort at all and I was just gliding through the air very very fun very very capable bike and I can't wait to get it back after the pandemic to ride it some more as I already mentioned this is the pro race spec model it costs 4,599 pounds it weighs 12.1 kilograms it comes with Fox factory suspension a Fox 34 on the front it comes with a uh, lockout on the rear and a Fox transfer dropper post with 125 millimeters of drop larger frames have more drop Sizes are from small to double XL, and I think that's everything covered. So yeah, the YT Izzo is available for pre-order on the YT website now, I believe. You can head over there and check out some more details. But if you have any questions about this bike, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up, and don't remember to, don't, don't remember? Yeah, remember. Remember to subscribe. Bye-bye.